All right, so let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, Stefano. My name is Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., uh, from the Studios in Fairfax City. We're very humble and grateful that Stefano Mainetti accepted our invitation to our show. Uh, Stefano, welcome to the show, man. Hi, Claudio. Hi, Claudio. My pleasure. Thanks for your invitation. Thank you. No, no much. problem. So let's start with the beginning with the with the COVID that, that has affected everybody. I don't know for a year and a half. You know, touring musician, composer, film scorer. You know, cannot play outside. They cannot do tour. People like me that like to go to show, they can not go that much until now. How how the COVID has affected you, your family, your your sanity, your your <laughs> your your real life? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Claudia, it, it was a still is a very strange, uh, a very strange time. I often am alone. I am often alone because you know, writing music when you compose, you are alone in your studio. So that, there wasn't much difference from the past. But as soon as the pandemic started, all the production quit. That was a great problem. And uh, so did my score production. I mean, and I was lucky because I continued to teach in music uh, at the conservatory, um, Santa Cecilia Conservatory in Rome. Uh, of course, in distant teaching mode, you know, via internet. Um, anyway, I think the effect of the pandemic have been worse for my daughter. She, she actually has 16 and uh, for her generation was a really tough. I mean, they lost great part of the fun for most of a couple of years, almost a couple of years. And this is re really sad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, as I told you, I, most part of my life is alone in a studio, writing music, composing music. Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually I'm 64, so there is no, much difference in, because I was a, every time writing music and it, it didn't change so too much for me. Mm. But I'm very worried about uh, my daughter and her generation. That's what's really tough for them. Yeah, not, not even able to go to school online, not even to yeah. see their friends. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. difficult. Yeah. The young people. Yeah, it's difficult when, when you are 14, 15, 16. It's difficult. It's up. Yeah, but what they, what they will need to adjust. I mean, like any any age, will adjust, and we are we're living in crazy times, you know. Yeah, for me, affected me because I couldn't go and see shows. You know, bands were canceling on the tour. So here in Washington, they see everything started a couple of weeks ago. So out of September first, all the venues open. So I'm able to see a couple of shows a week. I I see uh no. 40 shows a, a year, so I'm, yeah. I'm happy, but it was it was difficult. So and uh, and also in a way because as a computer engineer, I was working from home. Uh, give me the the sense of to understand what is important in life. You know the important stuff. You know I was going so fast in my life, and now I needed to slow down for a year and a half or two years. And I thought, well, maybe this is not important in my life. I really like music. I wanna, I like the radio. I wanna do that. And I wanna, I have hundreds of CDs that I was buying and, and vinyl, and uh, and I, I began listening to my own stuff, you know. So in a way, it was wasn't too bad, but it, it wasn't easy for many people. Yeah. Were, were you born like in a in a musical family? How old were you when you began playing? I don't know guitar or taking you know piano. No, I, I I I came from an entrepreneurial family. No, no, so no no musician in my family. I got a birthday present when I was uh, seven, I, yeah. just a guitar, and uh, I I remember I spent a lot of time with with this guitar. So my uh, my mother and my father decided to okay, it's better you study music. Maybe it's better you start to start to study classic guitar. And I started when I was eight with classic guitar. Later on, I studied piano and composition. I, I remember, Claudio, the passion I had for the music and also this passion helped me when I was a kid and a boy too, to communicate with other people better than the, with the words. I realized that the music was very powerful and music doesn't need translations. I mean, 
you, you, and you, you can easily transmit emotions to everyone without translation. Yeah. And uh, I still feel today this sensation. No filters between you and the other, straight, straight to the heart, to the heart. So it's wonderful. And when I was a kid, of course, I loved music because I loved classic guitar and composition. But I remember the very important thing was to communicate with, uh, with the other people with no filters. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and just directly. And the music is, is a power is a power instrument that let you uh, go straight ahead to the to the to the brain to the heart to the people directly yeah absolutely for example you can be in japan where you don't understand japanese they don't speak italian it wouldn't make a difference they are listening to your music a film score of and course music, and they love I, it. I don't I, I don't speak japanese or or, or russian lang language but if i want to say i love you to a girl in russian i just write a love theme and she can very well understand <laughs> <laughs> don't tell that to your wife though <laughs> <laughs> no no, no, I promise. No, no, no. <laughs> I promise. I'm, I'm, I'm a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what, what kind of music were you listening at, at the time when you were at, in the conservatory when you finished high school? It was kind of classical music. I mean, you, I know you, you're a fan of um, Richard Wagner, but when you were 14, 16, like your daughter's age, right? I, were you listening to rock and roll stuff or, or you have an appetite for classic? Everything, and... everything, Claudio. I, I mean, all kind of music, classic, jazz, pop. I remember when I was in my 15, uh, the afternoons in, in the, during the 17th with my friends listening to Genesis. Oh, yeah. Uh, Selling England by the Pound. Oh, uh, that's pretty good. Foxtrot uh, or oh, wow. Pink, Flo King, Pink Floyd, King Crimson. And yeah. uh, Chicago too. I remember. I loved Chicago. You remember the group Chicago? Oh yeah. Uh, and later on, Manhattan transfer. Yeah. Earth, uh, wind, and fire was my passion. Mm. Um, I also love science fiction feel. So I love the score from that kind of movies. So uh, you remember the uh, movies like uh, the day the earth stood still or the Forbidden Planet. Oh, yeah, I know all of them. Yeah, okay. The, the day the hair stood still, the, the soundtrack is by um, Bernard Herrmann, one of my favorite composers. Uh, he, he is the composer of uh, Hitchcock, of course. And I remember that kind of music too. And also jazz, all kind of music. Above all, when I was a kid, classic guitar, of course, Tarrega, uh, of course, Carcassi, of Sor, Segovia. And uh, also a lot of time with my with my mates, uh, Genesis, Pink Floyd. Uh, yes, a lot of Genesis at Pink Floyd. Yeah, good. For, yeah, for one of my favorite bands. So Genesis is going to be touring here in uh, in next month. Genesis is coming for um, to United States for twenty shows. They're doing here. And then yeah. after that, they are, they are retiring completely. So I'm, yeah. I'm, go I'm going to be seeing Genesis like three times in this tour. They play yeah, in sorry. DC and they play in North Carolina. And they're very, very good. And uh, so I'm very happy. So uh, when, you, when you went to study at university before you became a professor, you, uh, you knew that kind of you live in, in a way you left the kind of rock and roll and you went into more classical female score that's what you you decided to you decided to uh, go into that field if you will no, I, I mean actually it's different when I started um, for when I started to study at the conservatory 40 years ago yeah. you only had to study classic music okay now it's different because to the cons the conservatory where I teach is uh, the conservatory of Santa Cecilia is actually a university okay? And so I have courses from the, the bachelor to the master degree and uh, over a period of almost five years, okay? Yeah. And uh, I have actually a dozen of students from 23 to 48 years old. So they are, they are not, 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 not just boy, I mean. 
And they are already trained musicians, of course, because you, you can't pretend to study music composition for film if you, were, if you don't know the music language, you know what I mean. So yeah, they yeah. come from, uh, they are pianists or they are composers or they are uh, orchestral conductors, no? It's a, and it's a very specialized course. We, and I have, we, we have lesson one by one, just one by one, one hour or two hours sometimes, one by one. And the students have to write a symphonic score for scenes that I assign them taken from well-known films, no? without the original soundtracks. And they have to rewrite uh, an original orchestral score, but also have to record with uh, uh, computer sample music, you know, with uh, sequencer music, Logic yeah. Pro or Cubase. They have to use a lot of computer to simulate an orchestra. And sometimes they also have can performing with the real orchestra, their wow. composition. So basically we have scenes, mm, two or three minutes, one, one scene of two or three minutes, taken from movies, mm, very well-known movies. We take off the uh, original soundtrack and they have to rewrite an, uh, an orchestral score on paper or printed, whatever. And uh, they have to record via computer. Yeah. That's my job, exactly. They, they, I, I have to teach them how to do it, how it works. And uh, it's very stimulating for me. It's because I, I, as I told you, I have uh, uh, students from very well trained, very, very well music trained. So the, the, you, you, you talk with mu you have relation with musicians, basically. Yeah. Wow, that, that's pretty good because people were, and then toward the end of the, of the master program, uh, during the year, they need to do, you give them assignment for, uh, a month where they need to three minutes out of a film, you hide the music and then and they need to present it to you, they need to present it in front of an audience. How, yeah, how do you yeah, know? Yeah, how, yeah. yeah, they have to do examinations and they have to present every time, every lesson, they have to present something. We work around uh, the scene maybe four or five weeks, and yeah. at the end of the after six months, they have to, they have the examination. Oh. And then what kind of film do you select for them to do is Like Western, Whatever. science fiction, horror? Whatever. They, I, I know, uh, you know, Claudio, they have to be prepared to afford every kind of uh, problem, of mu musical problem, every kind of uh, comedy or dramas or action <laughs> or fun, yeah. television, short movies or cinema, uh, mainstream, wh whatever. Yeah, got gotcha, you, because, yeah, right, different. Like in your case, right, if you look back in your um, discography, you have done a wide range of stuff. Yeah, but I, 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 love, I love to change. That's my, uh, in my opinion, it's something that, mm, uh, it's something very good. You, you, you have to go, Every time you have to try something different and you, you don't repeat the same schemes, you know what I mean? And yeah, uh, it's yeah. something that let me, I, I feel alive every time. And I'm, and I'm scared at the same time because every time is new. So I like to afford every kind of genres, of music genres. I, I, I like it very much to change. Yeah. Is any um, particular... Italian director that you like, that you, you are the most fond of, and then uh, if you have, if you could have dinner with any with two two movie directors, dead dead or alive, right? Somebody invite you, one Italian and one non-Italian. Who that would be, and the reason? Paolo Sorrentino, oh, and wow. the Oscar winner, and I did. I was I was I was. Uh, I, I gathered in, I had the dinner with him. I wow. didn't work with him still. I hope it will be <laughs> possible in the future. Uh, at, at the moment, just we, we just had the dinner. <laughs> He's an Oscar Awards prize. He won an Oscar. Yeah. Of course, I, I, I love his movie. And yeah. 
I like very much the way he used the music on his movies. Yeah. And then a non, a, a non Italian one. Who that would be? A non Italian one, I have a very close friend of mine when I used to live in uh, LA. Yeah. A very close friend uh, is uh, Ted Kochev. Ted Kochev is the director of, of uh, Rambo, First Blood. Yeah, First Blood, yeah. And I was lucky because when I used to be in uh, LA, the first movie, my first soundtrack in the US, United States uh, was directed by Ted Kochev. Correct. And uh, the, title, the title of the movie was The Shooter. Yeah. It was yeah. an action movie during the, the Cold War the, in Prague, shooting in Prague. And uh, we, we became friends. We became friends and we still are friends. We're still friends. And uh, he's one of my favorite directors. And also the other one I know, I knew, I know, of course, still know very well, is um, Russell Malkai. I composed two soundtracks with, for Russell's Malkai movie. He's the director of uh, Highlanders. You remember the movie Highlanders? Yeah, yeah Highlanders, yeah. And uh, so I had... I was very lucky in my life to work with um, this kind of director still, uh, also in Italy and uh, in US too, of course. But mm. I was very lucky and uh, they are so different. I, I like, to, as I told you before, I like to change. I like to experiment every time. I like to, to be scared. So you are, if you are thrilled, if you are scared, you, 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 are stim you have a lot of stimulation, you have, you have a lot of input, and you can try to renew your kind of production. That's, yeah. my, that's my goal, mainly. I got you, I got you. Are you do you like, I don't know if you like uh, uh, Bernard Herzl in Germany, and uh, it's, a, it's a famous um, uh, group that composed a lot of film music for them. Uh, uh, with, it's his, the name of the band is Popol Boo in Germany. I don't know if, I don't think you know them, probably not. They're very, very no. good. They're very different. May, I, w I, will, I will coordinate with Lisa and then I, w I will send you some stuff because I, I, I have huge. <laughs> One day I will be able to finish to listen to you, but it very, it's very, Popol Boo is very different from the stuff you do, but it, it's very good. I mean, it's very, very good. So, let, let, so why you decided to, uh, to form the, the AC? MF, which is the Association of yeah, Music Composers for Film. Yeah. Feel free to elaborate on that. Why yeah, that's they, very important. Yeah, it is very important. It's, it's, very, it's a young organization. I mean, it's just four years ago, four years ago. Uh, ACMF is the acron, uh, acromion of uh, mu Film Music Composer Association. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I am one of, one of the founding members. Uh, we decided to form it. To yeah, four years ago, to represent and protect its members in their professional life. Uh, encouraging fair and transparent rules from creation to implementation to the manager and the copyright too. And uh, promoting the spread of musical culture and creativity. So not, not only for soundtrack, music in general. Yeah. And I often like to remember that cinema and soundtracks are the natural, Claudio, evolution of melodrama, the opera. We mean, when we say melodrama in Italy, we intend opera. Opera, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, and I often like to remember that the natural evolution of the melodrama, the, of the opera, is cinema. I mean, uh, where different form, you have a lot of different form of arts, no? Come together you put together to communicate to the audience, okay? And you communicate a result that is greater than the sum of the parts. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You, you are an engineer, so you know what is a non-linear non -linear process. Yeah, I, I completely so, understand, yeah, yeah. So if you get a scene and you say, okay, this scene is very well done, the, my vote is eight, Fantastic. And you get the music. Okay, the music is good. Eight to the music. And you put together, if they work very well together, you don't, not, you don't have eight plus eight, 16. You have 100 because it's right. a non-linear non process. 
Yeah. So uh, the, this is the goal of the ACMF, to promote the music and above all, of course, all the soundtracks, all, all about soundtracks. Uh, as I told you before, actually, we are almost uh, 150 members, most, most, most of the Italian composers. Yeah. And then you guys uh, get together like a couple of times a year, do like a conference, do... But, you know, in the last two years, we saw just uh, in a conference call. Yeah, with uh, the COVID. Through, yeah, for the COVID problem, for the pandemic problem, only... Uh, but normally we, we, we see um, five or six times a year. I got you. How's the situation in, in Italy with the COVID now, uh, Stefan? It's going, you know, it's going better, actually, because I think one of the reasons is because we, we, we were the first to start. The beginning of the pandemic in Europe was here in Italy. Yeah, yeah. So, so probably we have a curve. No, and we are finished in advance in, in compared to France or uh, Germany or UK. I mean, I mean, UK is not, it's not Europe anymore. They, they are up. Right. No, I, <laughs> that's another, another problem. But, but, that's, people, but that's another story. It, it, yeah, it, that's right. It, uh, it's, it's kind of mandatory to get vaccinated in Italy or no, or it's voluntary? It's voluntary. Actually, it's voluntary. But and most of the people do it, or but but there is a but. Uh, the, if you don't have the vaccine, you don't have the green pass. So it's not mandatory. But if you don't have the green pass, you don't go any in anywhere. So you have to have. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I. More uh, or less, you have, you have to. More or yeah. less, you have to if you want to move all around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I got vaccinated about um, like six months ago. So it's here in the in United States was it's voluntary, but people were encouraged and companies were encouraged, you know, schools were encouraged to people to do it. So, but still, there's a, a lot of people in the United States that don't, don't believe in the vaccine, whatever the reason that they have there. You know, it's so it affects everybody. There is some, something strange because I got to twice the AstraZeneca vaccine. Yeah. And uh, actually I can't come in US with AstraZeneca. I don't know, but it, it works in this way. Yeah. Well, I can't come there. I can't travel in US because I have AstraZeneca. So probably I will receive a third dose. Yeah. Pfizer or Moderna or whatever. Yeah. Just to, tra to travel all over the world. Yeah, the three one that accepted coming here are Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, and Moderna. And yeah. there is a link that I, I can send you the link where it showed exactly the requirement. If you come in from Germany, you need to have one of these three. If you come in from Italy, you need to have one of three. Yeah. And I know. I then, know. Not AstraZeneca. That AstraZeneca doesn't I don't know why. Have no idea. Say, I don't because you, you the Federal Drugs Administration. Recognize the AstraZeneca. You know the FDA. Yeah. You have it there. They recognize the AstraZeneca vaccine. So I don't know why it doesn't. It didn't work. I don't know. Yeah. Good. Good question. I wouldn't know the answer. Um, feel free to elaborate on your um, Richard Wagner. I know you. 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 You like him and the the influence that Richard Wagner have had in on on your music uh, composition. But I, you know. I believe Richard Wagner has influenced the soundtrack more than any other composers. He is the inventor of the leitmotiv. You know, the leitmotiv, uh, the main theme linked to a, char a character or a situation uh, that recurs every time we see the same character or situation. He invented this kind of uh, uh, set, set up. Uh, I, I wrote a book. I wrote a book uh, um, several years ago about him and the importance that his music had during the, the 20th century with particular reference to the development of the Bayreuth Festival. You know, Bayreuth Festival uh, still exists in Germany. Yeah. It's a festival dedicated only to Wagner, okay? And this kind of... Uh, 
the book I wrote, uh, it, it was an opportunity to talk about the World War II from a musical point of view. Oh, so I got was, you. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Because very, it's very strange. I, I wrote this book. I start writing the book uh, talking about, of course, um, Richard Wagner, but uh, you know why? Because it's uh, sometimes the music of Richard Button uh, or Richard Wagner is not performed because it's associated to the Nazis. Mm. But Richard Wagner died six years in advance to when uh, uh, Hitler was born. So he, he didn't know anything about Nazis. Yeah. And his music is wonderful. So uh, I started to write uh, uh, this book uh, about Richard Wagner to uh, try to explain he, he wasn't his fault. Of course it wasn't. Then I realized that it was very interesting to try to explain uh, the story of the Second War, uh, of the World War II mm. uh, from a musical point of view. There is a lot of uh, interesting thing that you can't imagine. And it was an, a nice experience. It, it, it took me two years to write that book. Wow, yeah. Are you, and, and, and is that book only available in Italy or is it another, in yeah, Italian yeah. or another language? Yeah, yeah, just in Italy, I mean. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do your students need to read that or no? It's mandatory for them to read the book or no? For your student at the conservatory or no? Or no, no. No, 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 no. It was That's something uh, yeah, no, yeah. No, totally apart. No, no. Wow, interesting. I never thought that. Yeah, I like I like Wagner and I and I know that he has been associated with the Nazi regime. I had nothing to do with the stuff like you mentioned. It. No, no. You know, no idea why. Yeah, it's kind of. No, no, there, there is a reason because during yeah. the, uh, the, the Nazism, they use his music. They use a lot uh, because uh, uh, Hitler loved his music, so yeah. he used he used a lot of uh, Wagner music in the in the camps. You know, yeah, that's why. But it's not Wagner fault. It wasn't Wagner fault. He he died. <laughs> yeah. In a, earlier. Yeah. Well, I, ho I hope people were. Yeah, I I know exactly what you mean. But this, it's. Um, Richard Barner here in the United States is very, very popular. I mean, uh, at, you know, and, uh, and you, you can, uh, there's a lot, many, many places that they play jazz classical music and opera houses and, uh, and you know, they, they, he's always had been very, very famous here in the United States. And uh, so, because they, so in, in terms of when, when, when composing, you know, who inspired you and which score do you love? You, I, I think that you, in many ways, answer the question, you, you, you at the beginning were doing some horror, then comedy, western. Uh, you, you, you change over time, right? You, you started with one genre and then you, you prefer to yeah, work said, in different. No, as I said before, I think I express myself better with the music than with the words. So it comes more naturally to me. It is normal that in my work I draw inspiration from the scenes, of course, uh, or yeah. of the film, of theatrical scenes. Anyway, I, 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 I draw the inspiration from something I see, of course. And it often happens to compose even following musical patterns. You know what I mean? That yeah, you know, yeah. you study these kind of patterns and you know that this works very well. It happens, it often happens happens in the um, in the action movie no especially in, in tension uh, scenes uh, part of the of teaching uh, part of uh, the teaching at the conservatory concerns uh, the study of psychoacoustic and therefore which music formulas to adopt to convey a specific sensation to the viewer so you know exactly that if i play this kind of chords you provoke a sensation in the listener. You know exactly how, what to do. So, of course, I, uh, you, 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 you hope that every time you have the inspiration to write a great soundtrack. 
but not every time, not, it don't, it, it, not every time it happens. <laughs> and when you don't have a, 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 an inspiration, you can use this kind of pattern. You know how it works using the psychoacoustic science. You know exactly that that kind of interval provoke in the listener a, a sensation different from a major chord is different from a minor chord. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's when, but when you when when somebody hire you uh, to do like a film score for music, you can have the idea for reading this, this, from the beginning from reading the script that a, a director gave you, or or you need to have very much the movie half finished in order for you to begin composing. Claudio, I prefer every time to read the script first. First, okay. That, that's my favorite way of mm, proceeding. But it, 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 it's not possible every time. Sometimes you have to work about the, the final cut. Yeah. So the, the best way to work is to read the script. Uh, sometimes, above all, when I, uh, I was in LA, uh, leaving with the, um, the writers, and you know, you start with some ideas, you, you, can, you, you, you have a group, you can do some brainstorming, and it works very well. Then you go to the set, you, 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 you stay with the actors, and you can breathe the story. Yeah, it grows up all together. And after you are alone, you write all your music, and you have time to real what your ideas you have, you have done before. But as I told you, Claudio, it's not possible every, every time. Sometimes you have to work with the on the final cut. And yes. I, you, no, you, I, have, you have no choice sometimes, right? Like you say. Yeah, and, no, no. It's up to the production. Above all, it happens with television movies. Yeah. What is the main if you in your your life, what's the had been the main motivation? to work with a particular genre or to work with a particular director or a particular script before, I mean, beside money, right? Of course, you want to get paid well for what you do, but it is, it's, if you have only the script, like these two pages, right? Here, let's say I have a script. Is it, is it difficult or easier for you to picture what the movie called for without seeing without the final, you know, without having the final cut. I mean, it's, it's difficult. It, I don't know, it seems to me that it will be a lot easier if I show you like a movie and you know it's an action, it's an action movie, a whole movie, or, and you know what type of music it requires, as opposed to go at the beginning and somebody give you a script. You don't know pretty much what the movie is going to be at the end based of that particular script so is I imagine that might be difficult to decide what kind of what kind of music it require right or, or that's or, up that's up basically your your question is it very interesting Claudio but that's up mainly it's up to the movie of the kind of movie I mean if you are to afford a, a drama with yeah. love themes you read you read the script you know you need a love themes you, you know, you read a drama music, dramatic music, and you can imagine, and you can play, and you can write, you can arrange it, and you can go ahead just with the script. But, but if you are going to afford an um, action movie, it doesn't work. I mean, you can imagine something very simple, but the main stuff in the action movie is the sync. You have to be synchronized with all the action. Yeah. So you have to write the music frame by frame. You need, the, you need the scene. You have to see. Because it's not very important. In that case, the theme, the melody is not very important. Yeah. For in that particular frame, the next 10 seconds, yeah, this yeah, happens. This happens. In, in an action movie, 10 seconds is a lot of time. Oh yeah, you know, not not in a drama or in a love love scene. Yeah. You you can write in, in in a different way. 
but with the action movie you have to go ahead frame by frame and you have, you have to be tough you have to, to be tied you have to stay in touch with the frame and with the all the sync all the synchronization yeah yeah i imagine that it's difficult because and then sometimes i imagine that you know a bad movie right and you were hired to do the the job the film composer you cannot save a very bad movie, perhaps you can save a scene, a particular scene within a bad movie, and somebody will say, man, that was a great, that was a great piece of music from the next 10 seconds or 30 seconds or a film score, but the music, the movie in general was, I don't know, terrible, right? <laughs> it happens, it happens. Yeah, it, it happens. happens right? you, have, you have wonderful soundtracks, but the movie is, you know, it's not so good, but uh, it happens also the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I you gotcha. have a great, a great movie, and uh, the music is so and so. But uh, uh, you know something very interesting, Claudio, is when you write a soundtrack and you see a scene, yeah. you can try, you you can test several kind of music. You wrote, you are writing, you are working around on the same scene. That's right, and uh, it changes totally the perception. So, I, I, I mean, it seems like you, you change the, the cut of the scene, but the scene is only, always the same. The music changed, but the scene is the same. So it's very important to understand that you can do a lot with the music. You can guide the listener in a way, and you have to tell something that the scene deserves. Right, absolutely right. So you do you have you have a particular scene like this interview between the world, and and you to write five different ten seconds. Let's say right. Uh, let's say the scene is ten seconds, and you write the first ten seconds, then the next ten seconds, the next ten seconds. Do you end up using the other one? That who who decide who which one of the ten seconds will go in the book? You decide the director. It's up to, uh, it, there is no just one formula, Claudio. It's up to the director, it's up to you. It, it depends on uh, if you are working around uh, a mainstream movie, if you have a very strong production or not. Basically, uh, it starts with a, a session called, uh, called uh, uh, spotting, se spotting Section. Yeah. And you see that at the very end, uh, of the movie, you see the final cut with the director and the producer. And the producer, yeah. you sit down. You sit. Down, you sit down with them, and you decide together where to put music and which kind of music to use. Oh, I got you. But got you. at that time, at that point, if the director or the producer call at you, Claudio, they know exactly what you can do. Right, because they they know and you for your previous work. So, right. Of course, the, the, the difficult stuff is to begin. <laughs> That's right, because nobody knows you. And yeah, did you, there, the there music, no the, the music, right, that's right. The, the music that you end up not using in a film, do you keep it to see down the road you can use it for another film or a compilation of unused music? Or I, I mean, I don't rush it. I mean, uh, I have some ideas in my uh secret secret pockets and uh, <laughs> i use sometimes and uh, i love theme an idea and actually um, yeah. it happens it happens of course you can as i told you before claudio you can't pretend to wake up every time five in the morning like this with a fantastic idea you know? no, <laughs> no, no it, it, it happens it happens not every time so you have to be ready because you have a very very tough schedule in the music in the um, movie business in the movie business it's very it's very hard above all claudio you are the last ring of the chain they are waiting only for you only for you and every time they call you did you finish have you done ah it's time to, we have to we have to mix we have to mix we, we have to see the movie uh, we have to finish so it's very tough and uh, it happens that you work 18 hours a day, night and day, night and day, night and day for one or two months. Wow. It happens. 
It have to, in, in average, take about it could take up to two months for to write a. It, uh, it's up to the movie. Could be, could yeah. be, could be. If you need, uh, if you have a movie of three hours and you need two hours of music, you you need sometimes you need uh, you can. Conf-